Hello, welcome to another episode of Ask Father Rob, where you send your questions into me, Father Rob Baldwin of St. James Episcopal Church, and I answer them here for you on the air, and now on YouTube as well. Today's question is one that I've received from several people. It's a topic that has been in the news a great deal, particularly with a movie coming up soon about it, which is the question about, is the world going to end in 2012? Now, for those who are unfamiliar with this idea, it comes from a, uh, let's just say an understanding, that there is an Incan calendar which ends in 2012, indicating an end of a period of time. Now, I say an understanding, and I say that actually uh, with some trepidation, because it is based upon archaeological evidence that it was found in a, uh, Inca, in a uh, ruin in South America, which is in itself incomplete, and it is in itself highly speculative. So it is not as though archaeologists know for a fact that the calendar is going to end at this time. Um, but instead, it is merely their conclusion that this is what this uh, carving on the wall means. Now, uh, I've talked to some people about this. And the fact of the matter is, um, I've talked to people who are familiar with Mesoamerican culture. And the fact of the matter is, is that many of them suggest that this merely indicates just the end of a particular block of time, much in the same way that if we had a calendar, which we do, and it had an end of a year, which it does, it does not imply that at the end of the year, time would end. I mean, it would be like if someone from another planet came and picked up a calendar at a bookstore and flipped through it and said, well, you got days here for March and April and May and July, but after December 31st, there's nothing there. I guess the world's going to end on December 31st. Well, that's not how we understand time. We record time in cyclical patterns, just as they did. So there are many who believe, wait, this doesn't mean that the end of the world is happening, just the end of a very long period of time. Moreover, all the talk about astrological, uh, 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 astronomical significances, plants in certain alignments, none of that has any scientific, physical impact on the world. We're not pulled by the gravitations of suns light years away. We're just not. It's not how it works. Now, all that aside, forget the fact that there's no archaeological evidence to suggest it's going to happen. Forget the fact that there's no scientific evidence that it's going to happen. Let's talk for a moment about my area of expertise, theological, scriptural suggestions that the world is going to end in 2012. To this, I point, as I do in every time something comes up about this is going to be the end of the world, this is the sign of the end times. I mean, it happened in 2000, it happened in the Millerites back in the 1940s. Every time a group of Christians thinks that they know the day of the end of the world, all I do is turn to the Gospel of Matthew, particularly the 24th chapter and a couple of different verses. First, I want to read to you uh, verse 23. Then, if anyone says to you, look, here's the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and produce great signs and omens to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Take note, I've told you beforehand. So if they say to you, look, he's in the wilderness, do not go out. If they say, look, he's in the, he's in the inner rooms, do not believe it. The existence of false prophets, people who believe that they know when the end time is going to be, Jesus said that would happen. But even more importantly is this passage, verse 36. And again, this is one that I go to time and time again, every time the topic of being able to specify through prophecies or whatever about the end days. But about the day and hour, no one knows neither the angels in, of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. It doesn't say, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but a group of small primitive natives in South America. They'll know. No. I mean, really, if it's going to be revealed to anyone, why would it be revealed to them? Why do we even believe, as, as people of faith, 
that this would be the way which was revealed, when Jesus says it will be revealed to no one. So I, I sort of take this again on sort of two fronts. One is, of course, the very rational approach that says there is nothing to suggest that they have any foreknowledge of the end of the world, and then that is, might even be a misapplication of what is being presented or a misunderstanding of it. And as a person of faith who says, really, no one will know the hour. Instead, any time I'm posed with a question about end times, I instead say, look, the real issue here is, how are you living your life today? If you don't know when it's going to be, it could be today, be the day that you're watching this. It could be... 100,000 years from now. What does that mean in the eye of the eternal God? It is about, are you living the life that you want to live right now? Are you being the person that you want to be right now? Are there things in your life, things that you can take steps to improve, th wrongs that you can redress, a different path that you'd be walking on right now? If so, it's time to do that. It's time to make that change. It's time to turn your life around. It's time to be the person that you want to be because you don't know when you're not going to have the chance to make those changes anymore, when you're not going to have the chance to say those things to those people that you wish you could say to them but you haven't done yet because you're scared or you just don't care or whatever thing is coming is keeping you from doing that. Now is that time. I'm reminded of a great short story about a man who uh, lived in Ireland and was uh, hoping to immigrate to America, and he was told that he could leave at any time, that, they, that he didn't know when they would say to him, it's your turn to get on the boat to go to America. And so he walked around everywhere he went with a suitcase full of his clothes, and every time he saw a friend, he thought, this might be the last time I see my friend. And he would always tell that friend how great a friend that was. And when he saw his family, he s would say, this might be the last time that I see that family. And I'll tell them how much I love them because I don't know when they'll say to me, you know, Mike, it's your turn to go to America. And eventually in the story he dies, having not gone to America, but having lived a life where everyone around him knew how much they meant to him, knew how he felt about them. Are you living that kind of life? Are you going around being the person that you'd like to be, even just the smallest amount, where none of us are uh, perfect? But even in that small way that, that the Spirit of God can change your life now, that's what you should be working on. Not worrying about falling buildings or meteorites or horrible weather storms that might happen three years from now, or, as I, probably assure, as I assure you, are probably not going to happen. But instead, are you living your life for God? That's the question. Thanks for a great question. You can send all of your questions to me. Father Rob Baldwin, care of St. James Episcopal Church, Piqua, 200 West High Street, Piqua, Ohio, 45356, or you can email them to us at St. James Piqua, that's S-T-J-A-M-E-S-P-I-Q-U-A, at yahoo.com. Don't forget, you can always catch episodes of Ask Father Rob on YouTube. Just type in Ask Father Rob, Father's FR period, and uh, you can see all of your favorite past episodes, including this one. And thanks again. Have a great week.